This video is part of my financial series where I take you step by step in building Power BI financial reports and dashboards. Enjoy. So our goal is to make this section more dynamic based on what's being discussed, the current month, the current quarter, or the current uh, year to date. And we're going to end up with something like this. And here you can see we have a selector and we can choose based on whatever discussion ensues in the financial meeting, the monthly meeting. So if people are focused on the current month, then you just click current month and notice the, you know, this one is 1.8 mil, which matches up with the current month. But if the discussion switches to quarter to date, we can switch the detail over here to, to match 2.9 mil, the quarter to date number. And within this, you can have all the uh, interactivity. You can see, hey, where is the variance coming from? And, uh, you know, kind of click to understand that, oh, okay, labor expenses, those are high. And let's see which department is overspent in labor expenses. It looks, looks like corporate is pretty high percentage wise executive general administration but you get the point that that's the whole idea of having an interactive report that you don't walk out with a ton of action items so it, uh, regardless of where the discussion is it, it's about the current month the quarter to date or year to date it's going to let you analyze and slice and dice those numbers and understand what happened in that time frame so let's see how we can go about by building this now the first thing we need in the model is is this a, a simple table which is a selector table which has these labels essentially because these do not exist in the model yet so i open the query editor and typically the way i create the, these tables is i just enter data if it's a simple table i just enter data and either type it in or i paste it in and once you have that if I'm editing it and if I need to make big changes, I don't know, somehow this blows up into like 20 rows, I typically keep that in Excel and I just uh, control we paste it in here to overwrite it. But that's my table, current quarter to date, year to date, and I definitely don't want it sorted alphabetically. That's why I have the sort order as well. Well, actually, I just realized that probably alphabetical order would have worked too, but still, hey, you, you get the idea so that you can use for sorting. So now we have this table and uh, you can feed this back to our data model. And this is our classic disconnected slicer or disconnected table approach. So you can see that it's, it's sitting over here and really we have no intention to connect it in any way to a finance table, but we're gonna essentially affect effectively create a relationship and force this table to filter the finance table by using measures and the starting point for that is selector num which is just gonna give us give us information on what has been selected what is what has the user selected in in this box have they selected you kind of year to date quarter to date or current so let's go over to our measure list and look at this section. So you see we start with the selector num, which is simply the min of selector number, and that gives us one, two, three. And from that point on, if you notice the selector pane here, notice that it's not using the standard measures. This is not using the same measures as here. It's not using actual. It's using this actual select, budget select, variance select. And these measures are driven by the selector uh, that is well selected. So if you go back to our measure list, you can see that this is using a switch statement, which is kind of like a if then else, but looks a, f a far more elegant than a whole nested if then else. And it's saying switch selector num, which is kind of saying evaluate selector num. If it is, if it is uh, one, then return actuals. If it is two, return the actual QT QTD measure. If it's three, return the year to date measure. So effectively, now our selector num one two three actual quarter date year to date is gonna return a different measure and you see the Lego blocks approach I'm just reusing my existing measures so I'm I'm combining them uh, in in this case in a switch function to get my expected behavior and budget select is is the same way based on which scenario has been selected it returns the right measure variance and percentage variance select are exactly the same way. And now if you go back, so now you've seen the, uh, the you know, kind of what's under the covers and how it's set up. So again, 
this is the, the disconnected slicer approach that we have seen inside the course and in here it's being used to select the right measure and there's no relationship between these two tables because that is essentially enforced inside our DAX. So now if we say current, then it says, oh, selected num is one. That means I'm going to show actual. If I click QTD, it says, oh, selector num is two. That means I'm going to show actual QTD. And you can see 2.9, 2.9. Now you might have noticed there is uh, quite a bit of empty space over here. Nah, never a good thing for a dashboard. Real estate is precious. And we want to show some useful information there. So how about we add a little bit more to our storytelling here? Hey, keep watching more videos and keep learning Power BI. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Power on, my friends.